Goldman Sachs chief economist, head of global investment research, Jan Hatzi, is, is here at Post here 9. Here for the party. <laughs> yes, Jan, it's great to have you. I definitely want to participate. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you, well, great call at 190. You were not far from, uh, from the actual print. Are you leaning toward the softer elements of this or, or the nice print itself? Probably more the softer elements. I mean, I think it was a little bit more mixed than the unemployment rate and the headline payroll numbers suggested with some of the factors that Steve just walked through and also the ISM on the softer side. So I think it's a bit weaker. So I don't think it's necessarily a roadblock to cuts from the Fed relatively soon. But the main driver of cuts from the Fed in our forecast is weak inflation. The inflation numbers have been very soft, and if that doesn't unwind, then I think we'll be at a point before too long, maybe by the March meeting, where they say inflation is now sufficiently close to 2% that we should start to reduce rates. That said, you have not been seduced by all the talk of March cuts or June cuts, right? We, we, do, have a, we do have a March cut in the, in the forecast. You do? Yes, okay. We do, basically because... Uh, Chair Powell said at the press conference in December that they want to get moving if it becomes clear that we're moving back to 2%. The minutes said the same thing. And, you know, we think that year-on-year -year core PCE inflation is falling to, you know, 2.5% by the end of the, the first quarter. And I think in that sort of environment, with more deceleration expected, what they have said is consistent with cutting at least gradually. But the other thing that the jobs report showed today, Jan, is that, that we're really seeing some real income growth, some real wage growth, which I know has been part of your soft landing scenario. But now that wages are rising faster than inflation, that bodes very well for consumption, which also might make it harder for inflation to come down. Well, we certainly agree that the economy is pretty solid and strong real income growth is an important part of that, but it has not stood in the way of very significant disinflation in the United States and really across the world. And we think that's going to continue to be the case. There will be additional disinflation. And as there is disinflation, even in a healthy growth environment, I think the Fed's likely to say, you know, five and three eighths for the funds rate is too high. That's the set signal that they have been sending. What about financial conditions? That's the other argument. And we know they're watching it. It was mentioned during the minutes of the last report. Does that threaten to keep inflation stickier than they'd like? Again, I think it is a good reason to expect the economy to be solid from a growth perspective. It's not necessarily going to have a big impact on disinflation. Yes, at the margin, you're right, of course, that all else equal, Easier financial conditions, stronger real income growth, a stronger economy means a little bit more inflation than you would see otherwise. But I just don't think it's, a, it's something that's large enough to overturn that. Do you think they are wary of cutting too close to the election, that they want to get any cuts of the year done earlier rather than later? No, that's not really part of our thinking. We, we think, you know, they're focused on em the employment side and the inflation side of the mandate, and that's how they make their decision. What about conversations last couple of weeks about maybe slowing or ending QT, right, and, and thinking of Treasury supply? Well, there have been conversations about that for quite a while, and certainly market participants for much of 2023 thought that QT was going to end much earlier than what they had signaled. We don't really see it as imminent. Um, you know, we're really thinking start sending signals late in the year and then end it, you know, very end of the year or early 2025.